Hi. Um, so my name is Enrico, and uh, for, when I turned 44 years old, I had a little bit of a meltdown. I realized my lifestyle was very toxic. I had a terrible accident. I crushed my lumbar four. I was told by the doctors that I was never going to be able to run, and certainly uh, if I walked, I would have walked with a limp. It was a little bit of a tragic moment, and I got quite scared. Um, I knew that things weren't working out, and one of the points I'd like to make today is that inside of us, we know when things are not right. We might mask it up, but we know what's going on. And I, being a little bit radical in the way I do things, I decided it was pointless to go halfway. So I decided to change my life entirely and find a new direction. In 2001, I had started a company that made garments with recycled jersey in the state of Alabama. We used um, old stitching techniques from the Appalachian Mountains to make quilts. Everybody thought I was mad, but the business actually worked. But most importantly, it opened my awareness, which is very important, to sustainability. I realized that you could have a business, you could do good, you could contribute, you could create a community, and you could live off it. So um, in 2007, June 29th, I left New York. I left everything I built and did. I sold my companies. I sold my businesses. I'm sorry, same thing, but I sold my home. And I left for Europe. I started studying everything I could to see how I could better my life, how to be sustainable. And I took uh, courses in yoga. I became actually a certified yoga instructor. I started meditation. I learned all about health. I studied about cell transplant and stem cells. I went to India. I went to China. I even did white magic. I tried everything I possibly could to become self-sustaining. I learned how to cook, how to sew. I even tried to make candles and soap. I mean, I tried it really all. And at the end of the game, what I found very, that was very interesting to me, having worked in real estate and finance before, was that 40% of all carbon emissions come from buildings. That was shocking to me. I also found out another statistic which really impressed me, which is that 43% of all the food we produce goes to waste. Having had a background in real estate and finance, I felt that maybe this was going to be my calling. I had to do something that was related to sustainability, to health, and to the home. And so the direction I had to take, it was pretty obvious, was to try to make environments or to study and bring the message that the home can be a healthy environment. One can actually improve the quality of your life. We spend 90% of our time indoors. We spend 35% of that in bed. That is a staggering 260,000 hours spent in bed. So the bedroom is really very important to us. It affects the way we perform. I mean, sleep is an incredibly important function in our body. It's very reparatory, and I'll get to it later. But the number one thing which I really understood out of all these different philosophies was that we do have one master book to look at, to learn things, and that is nature. If you look at nature, and you understand that nature is a closed loop cycle, where nothing goes to waste, where the mechanism uses you and you use the mechanism. It's a symbiotic way of life. And that's the way we should learn how to live. Um, another very important thing was that cleansiness is like to godliness. In other words, if you want to change your life around, if you want to do something new, you have to really clean out first. You have to get the clutter out of your, ha out of your house, out of your head, so that you can think clearly. There are a few things that you can do at home, and I had a little bit of a bucket list, but I want to bore you with it, so I'm just going to go through it quite fast. For instance, the mattress. Mattresses are mostly made with synthetic fibers, which means that every time that you rest on it, the air seeps through it, and you inhale that air, and that air is somewhat toxic. Well, multiply that by 260,000 hours, and it tells you more or less what a mattress could do to you and to your state of health. There are now options on the market which are affordable, which are made of natural fibers like cotton and wool. And next time you consider buying a mattress, I would really like you to think about that. Not to mention the fact that all these mattresses end up in landfill. 
And so let me give you one staggering number. 5.9 million mattresses were discarded in 2014 in the UK alone. So if you think that you're discarding a petroleum-based product, it's going to last forever. It's going to take thousands of years to disintegrate. But a product that instead is made with an organic compound will take 500 times less. So that's something to think about. I think the same thing goes with your pillow and your sheets. I mean, we're not designed to handle microfibers which come from the wear and tear of our products at home especially not man-made microfibers. Those are very bad for your lungs, and they do have a cumulative effect. Um, lights. It might seem stupid, but with the advent of the new regulations for LEDs, we're all flooded with them. I mean, they're a lot of fun. Now you can buy strips, and you can buy light bulbs that are super cool. You put them under your bed. You can change the lights with your app on your phone. You have 8 million different... Um, combinations of lights that you can have. It's incredible. However, one thing that people don't talk about is that whether it is a tablet or a laptop or a light, it also emits blue lights. And that frequency interferes with your endocrinological system. It actually lowers the production of melatonin. So I would recommend to you in your bedroom, after you've changed your mattress and your sheets, um, is to also have an incandescent light to use at night with a dimmer. That would really help with your sleep. Electromagnetic waves and frequencies. Um, that's a big one. Um, I mean, we all have an intuition. And as I said to you before, we are you know, part of this universe and part of a mechanism. And I think that we, we know how things, when things are right or wrong. Well, now, Try to picture a baby sitting on top of a router. I'm sure you'll cringe. No reason to, really, apparently, but there is one reason. You know intuitively that that's not healthy. So the Wi-Fi and all electromagnetic frequencies in your bedroom really do affect you. Now, there is a very quick way to solve that, is you can buy an extension cord with a switch and multiple plugs, and you plug all of your electronics in it. And at night, when you go to sleep, you just switch that thing off. And there you are. You have some peace and quiet. Um, when we are in bed, we use a laptop a lot. At least I do. And um, I'm quite serious about this one. Please make sure that you don't use your laptop directly here, in your genital or your stomach area. Very bad for you, especially if you one day would like to build a family. It does have an influence on a biological and cellular level on you. And there have been studies that have proven it. It's very dangerous. Um, there are lap desks, which are lined with uh, a fabric impregnated with colloidal silver. And that will prevent the EMF from reaching you. And they also have something called belly blankets that you can buy, for instance, on Amazon. Air. That's a big one. Air, prana, that's the source of all energy. And, you know, your grandmother or your mother might have told you to open the windows and to freshen up. It's uh, true. You should do that. Um, unfortunately, outdoor air in big cities can be more toxic than indoor air. So you can always consult the web to see what's going on. But keeping the air in your room clean is really essential for sleeping. And I'll come to it at the end when I talk about toxicity. Uh, you can buy a filter. You can get an HEPA rated filter uh, machine. Sometimes they go on sale. They can be relatively inexpensive. But I think it's an incredible investment. As is, for instance, when you repaint your room using a no VOC uh, paint. Uh, some paints now on the market are made even entirely with organic compounds. Those are practical things that you can do. but. Above and beyond those, I think it's a state of mind. When I studied um, sustainability, I realized that the biggest stumbling block is not so much the product or the action. It is a state of mind. You have to change your perception of what sustainability is. And as you make all these little changes in, in your bedroom, it will automatically instill like a seed inside of you, will open the door to sustainability, will increase that awareness. And that's really what you want to do. Going back to toxicity, I'd like to say that 
our body is a perfect system. And um, we, during your sleeping, is when it really cleans out and performs all its reparatory functions. Now, if the body has to choose between cleaning out and repairing, it will first clean out, which is also an interesting process to think about. So if your body is toxic, and if your body is toxic in bed, and if your body is toxic in bed and has to perform its functions during sleep, it will first of all clean itself out then it will repair. So I think it's very important to make sure that the bedroom is like an inner sanctum. It's like, um, it's like your protective layer from the world. I mean, there are Wi-Fi's now everywhere. That, I'm, ter I'm terrified about Wi-Fi. And I think that when you go into somebody's apartment or in a building, you turn on your phone and you check what signals you get, you get the signals of 20 of them. Well, all that stuff is energy. All that stuff goes into you. It can go through walls. Well, so why shouldn't it be able to go through your head? I mean, it's highly unhealthy. The bedroom and the home is changing dramatically. I mean, the way uh, we perceive things is changing. Technology is making these big changes. But I think that, to me, in the future, the bedroom will become more and more a sheltering place um, to the extent that Everything will change, but really, the enemy outside is no longer going to come to you with a clave to club you on the head and drag you away from the hair. I think the enemy of the future is going to be those minuscule particles that come in through the windows, that come in through the ducts, that come through the food and through everything that you do, which are polluted. The new luxury is going to be cleansiness. And I know all of this is crazy. I mean, I changed my life around. And I have to tell you, at 54, I feel great. At the beginning, I thought it was mad. But I think you have to believe in madness. And the way to believe in your madness is to really listen to your inner voice. Thank you very much.